Welcome back, Physical Science 20. This is part two of the PW 3.1 section. So we took a one way of looking at index every fraction using Snell's Law. We're going to take a look at another way of determining the index every fraction and using it. So at the start, we also talked about, we're going to be talking about the speed of light. The rounded value for the speed of light in a vacuum, which is an area that has absolutely nothing in it, no air molecules or anything. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. In air, the speed of light is slightly less because you have molecules of air, etc. But for our intent and purpose, again, we'll assume that we're working with a vacuum. Uh, for air or vacuum, because it's slightly less. It's like something like 2.98 times 10 to the 8. In other transparent media such as water or glass, the speed is smaller because light slows down in dense medium media. Light travels in water at approximately 0.75 C. So notice here, and you'll run into this in Physics 30, uh, we use this value so often that it has its own value, little c. And yes, that is the c in Einstein's e, e equals mc squared. That c represents the speed of light in a vacuum. In uh, water, 75% of that number will be the speed of light in uh, water. Other materials produce different values, but the speed is always smaller in those media. The term optically dense is used when referring to a medium in which the speed of light decreases. The ratio of speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in a given material is also index of refraction. Interesting. So we have two different ways of calcula calculating it. We can look at the signs of the angles of it coming in. So earlier when we figured that out, so we have uh, the sign of the incoming angle uh, compared to the sign of the outgoing angle into the one medium to another. So this, would repre if this rep represents air, this represents substance 2, and N is the index of refraction of substance 2. Or we can look at it in terms of comparing the speeds, which is really interesting. The higher the index of refraction of a given substance, the more light is slowed down. So the higher that N value, the more it's slowed down. When light travels from a vacuum into the substance, for example, Air with an index of refraction of 1.0003 slows down very little. So when I'm going from vacuum to air, very little change. But if I'm talking about going to crown glass or flint glass or a diamond, it slows down substantially. So let's look at an example dealing with that. So we'll look at the speed of light in a mystery liquid is 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is the index of refraction of that liquid? And then, of course, once I know that, I can figure out the identity of that liquid. All right, so let's take a look. So we're looking for this index of refraction, this mysterious liquid. Speed of light in a vacuum, or loosely speaking, air. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And in this liquid, 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So easy. Simply plug it into here. The ratio of speed of light in the vacuum to speed of light in the substance gives us the N value. So 3.00 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.25 times 10 to the 8. Now when you're doing this in your calculator, I need to remind you to please, please, please. What often people do is they, they write this as times 10 and they write it as this divided by this times 10. Treat this as one number because you will make a mistake because your calculator will think that this times 8 is on top. So the best bet is to use scientific notation just like over here. So 3.00 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.25. On mine, it's the EE button on these Texas instruments. And you can see what I get here. 1.333. 1.333. So that is what we get. And that is part A. Part B, oh, find the identity. So if we just happen to have a table that has index of refraction, that has refractive indices, 1.33, there it is right there. What are those? So therefore, the liquid must be 
What are those, those, those? Good. Easy peasy. Let's look at another scenario on the next page. Using the indices of refraction table from earlier, calculate the speed of light in flint glass. So in flint glass, so assume we're going, so assume we're going from uh, well, air into glass. So that's what we do with that equation. So flint glass, we're gonna have to look that up. Flint glass, flint glass, right here, 1.62. So I'm going from air into flint glass in air, 3.00 times 10 to the 8. If I didn't, if I wasn't going from air, but something else, I'd need to know the speed in that uh, particular uh, media. So N equals C over V, 1.62 equals 3.00 times 10 to the 8. And oh, we're looking for V. Now there's a couple of different ways we can solve for this. But uh, kind of the easiest way to do it is just simply interchange these two. Because if I, let's say I had values, um, let's say I had this, let's take easier numbers. If I had 2 equals 6 over x, okay? And uh, take a look if I was doing this the long way. If I was doing that the long way, so 2 equals 6 over x. So of course, I want the unknown in the numerator. So multiply by x, multiply by x. And I would have 2x equals 6. Then, of course, you know how to handle it here. Divided by 2, divided by 2. And x would be equal 6 divided by 2. x is equal to 6 divided by 2. So we'll get the shortcut going directly from here to here. Haha, <laughs> just interchange those two and it works. Here's the math that proves that it works. So V is equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.62. So when I do all that, I get 1.85 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right. So it's another way in which we can look at the index of refraction. We can either determine it or use it when I'm talking about the signs of the uh, incident and refracted angle, or I can refer to it in terms of the speed in which light is traveling. All right, the last thing we're going to look at here in this area is index of refraction. The angle of refraction is larger than the angle of incidence when light passes into a medium with a low N value or index of refraction, as shown in figure A, uh, like from here, for example, into another one. Now, this leads to an interesting phenomena. As the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction increases as well. So here we're looking at this vice versa. We're going from a heavy medium into a light medium. So remember, when going from less dense to more dense, the, the refracted ray goes towards the normal. If I go vice versa, from a more dense to a light dense, it goes away from the normal. So an in interesting thing here, the, there always is a little bit of reflection. If you've ever played billiards, you know that angle I equals angle R. Hit this, it comes back like this. But most of it exits. Now, if I increase this angle, look what happens. This angle here, maybe we'll use these pens. If I increase the red marker, the blue marker increases too until, ooh, it's level with the surface. So at a certain angle of incidence, known as the critical angle, situation critical, the refracted light lies along the boundary of the two media, as shown in figure B down here. So look at that. The critical ray lies right on there. When light strikes a transparent boundary, between, uh, even though much of light is transmitted, some is reflected, as we saw up here, but total internal reflection. Total internal reflection occurs when light traveling from a region of higher index of refraction to a region of lower strikes greater than the critical angle. So if I was to increase this angle a little bit more, oh, all of it is going to be reflect, reflected back as seen below over here. So yes, it is reflected backwards. To construct an equation for the critical angle of any boundary, you can use Snell's law and uh, substitute theta of 1, which is theta c, uh, and uh, the refracted angle as, well, this would be 90, wouldn't it? So if I had n1 
sine theta one equals n two sine theta, oops, sine theta two. And if I know that this angle here, my incoming angle, it's gonna be an interesting angle. It has its own special name, theta c, going into my second medium. Now, sine of 90. Now, if some of you from pre-calculus land can remember sine of 90, oh, sine of 90 equals one. So it equals one. So I have N2 multiplied by one is equal to that. that. So over here, sine theta C is equal to, well, divide each side by N1. And I get N2 over N1 equals sine theta C. And if you turn to the next page, you'll see that's what we have. Look at that. Critical angle for total internal reflection Sine theta C, the critical angle, the angle that results in a refracted uh, ray of 90. There it is right there. The sine of the critical angle is equal to the index of refraction of the refracting media divided by the index of refraction of the incident media. Here's an example here. We'll save that for the next video, though, and uh, we'll take a look at that since we're almost at the uh, over the 10-minute mark. All right, so we'll see you in video three.